Hello everyone and welcome back to my Air Hauler 2 career in X-Plane 11. In the previous video I brought my Velocity V-Twin to 38CA, which is a airport north of Bakersfield. And I was going to pick up a job there, but I think the job I have highlighted is a different one. The other one must have expired or something. And so I've got the, that cigarette job to bring them to Washington State, but that's a long trip and doesn't pay very well. So I found this other job from Bishop, California to Marysville to ship sun cream, and that paid like twice as much and wasn't nearly as far. The trick is, I didn't know whether this plane could handle the 1,200 pound load in one flight. It might take two flights, in fact it will take two flights, I'll tell you that right now. But it required a relocation flight again, so here I am flying from 38CA to Bishop Airport in California. And so here is our takeoff. As usual, the Velocity V-Twin pitches up pretty strongly on takeoff. It doesn't have flaps, and uh, I don't think it just sort of glides off. It definitely rotates and very strongly at that. But anyway, it survives. Uh, I have had propellers break on me when I have them scratch the ground, so that's a thing. And it did not. I'm just looking around here. I see the breakers there. There was an iPad on the right seat. And that turns out to uh, place itself up there. And it has a lot of functionality. Uh, many planes have this particular iPad with this functionality. I don't know what it's called. But uh, yeah, so there's another map to use. And here we are flying over the endless fields of South Central California. Uh, though there is the Sierra Nevadas, and we are going to go amongst the mountains. And where we're headed is actually a valley in the midst of the Sierra Nevadas. It's the Owens River Valley, and we'll be following the Owens River up to Bishop, California. And on the way back to Marysville, we'll be flying over Yosemite, and I was looking forward to that because I hadn't seen Yosemite with the Orpho photos in X-Plane 11. So I think that's the Owens River. We also flew over the Kern River, and um, I'm not sure if that's the o Kern River or the Owens River, but Owens River. So somewhere along the way, we also passed by Mount Whitney, but I couldn't identify it. So we weren't really aiming for it in particular. And everything looks pretty dry. This is not Death Valley, but... <laughs> It, it doesn't look uh, particularly advertising at the moment. But there's the runway, and that's where we're going to pick up our payload. Uh, a little bit bumpy. I've got a tailwind. I should have landed in the opposite direction. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Some, I, I was actually flying this during a live stream, so I might not have been as attentive. Heck, even in general, I'm not that attentive to things sometimes. So, yeah. This is... Uh, uh, well, it says it'll buff out. It does do uh, take damage on landing if you do land too hard. And it does charge you for repairs. So that is something Air Hauler 2 does. So I just decided to park in this little node here. I don't know what it's supposed to represent, but... So that was convenient. And there's the sun cream. Uh, sun block, I suppose, of some kind. And, yep, that'll take two trips side to side, so I only take half of it this time. You can see the cargo is only 986 pounds, and so it's a little bit more than half this time. And off we go. So, on to Marysville, our home port. And, as usual, the plane will sort of bounce up on me once uh, we get enough power. There we go. And now for some sightseeing. We are diverting a little bit from the straight line course in order to get to Yosemite. And of course that's worth it. But on the second trip I won't be doing that. So here we are. That, that alone is a pretty wonderful sight. For sure. And of course, as of all things, I'm going to be interested to see how all this looks in uh, Flight Sim. The new Flight Sim. But yep. Here we go, that's Yosemite Valley. And you can see Half Dome there actually to the left. So that's pretty good. Of course it's better at ground level, for sure. But still, you can get a sense of things. The choppy air earlier in flight smoothed out and we flew over Yosemite Village and then proceeded from there. The autogen trees puzzle me sometimes. You can see they sort of cover certain patches, but 
never understand why they are only covering certain squares and not others. But okay, I fly over this area. I'm not entirely sure, but it looked like California's own mini Grand Canyon. Not entirely sure which river is making that, but yeah, that was pretty good looking. And then we proceeded on past the mountains and into the Central Valley towards Sacramento. So the Sacramento general area looked like this. We're pretty far out here. Sacramento's uh, far to the left, forward left. And here uh, we're flying over the sort of Sacramento metropolitan area, uh, but uh, not really Sacramento itself. So anyway, I line up with the runway and here's the landing. Uh, this time it's a headwind, but I don't know. Uh, I think I need to move my eye point a little bit higher. I couldn't see the runway very well. That's one benefit of having track IR enabled is to uh, just be able to look over the panel a little bit better, but I didn't have it enabled this time. I wasn't wearing the little hat, so I just uh, took it as it was. And there was the landing, still uh, it'll buff out kind of landing. And uh, sort of overran the yellow stripe on parking, but cargo and fuel unloading. So we delivered some sun cream, as they call it. And I'm picking up building materials. So one good thing was that I was able to pick up a contract that went from Marysville to Bishop. That was very convenient. So uh, because we have to split the Bishop to Marysville cargo into two, it was good to have a little uh, Bishop uh, Marysville to Bishop cargo to fill it in as we make our way back. Anyway, and that was the data from that landing. For the next two flights, the one back to Bishop and then completing the cargo mission to Marysville, I decided to do it off stream, so not while live streaming. Oop, and it always just kicks up like that. And this flight was actually pretty late in the day, so it's going to be a nighttime landing. I decided to try and figure out the, the flight computer here. And so I was messing around with it. I loaded the flight plan in. And so, yay, we were actually using the flight plan system. And that's good for nighttime, of course. So here I'm following GPS and then ultimately I'm following the VOR. And you can see the airport to the right there. And here we are lined up at night with all the glittery lights at Bishop. And this is how the landing worked out. I noticed an X-plane sign over there to the right uh, that was interesting and probably distracted me a little bit, but uh, anyway, here we are. Can I make a better landing this time? I'm trying. Uh, uh, it was okay. Well, it didn't say it had to buff out, so that's an improvement, I suppose. Okay, and then next morning I pick up the remaining sun cream. So I delivered the building materials and I picked up the remaining sun cream and it was back off to Marysville. You can see the airport environs as I taxi. I did do all the taxiing stuff uh, generally. And here we are on the runway and I didn't really line up with the runway properly, not with the center of the runway. I just powered up and went ahead with it. So here we go again. Same basic route, but this time I'm gonna fly a little bit straighter instead of going over Yosemite. So not quite as scenic or well, I mean, it's scenic enough. I mean, let's face it. It's still a dynamic sort of environment. It's not without its uh, features. One of the nice things about being a small-time air hauler is that you get a better look at the landscape and you fly fairly low over various areas of the country as opposed to those airliner pilots and big-time freight pilots. They fly at 30,000 feet or more and they don't really get a good look at things. So, yeah. After this flight, I decided to try and lease a plane with Air Hauler 2 and see how the leasing system worked and whether it was worth it. And it's the Piper Cheyenne 2 from Carinado that I lease. And it's obviously a more capable plane, but also I was a little bit tired of the sort of jerky takeoff from this and the rougher landings too, because again, it doesn't have flaps, so. It's a sort of different feel to things. And I just wanted a calmer plane. 
And of course, I'll be leaving this to an AI pilot, and that turns out to make it worthwhile because with the AI pilot handling it, we make a lot more money. I don't, you know, I can't always fly all the flights myself, and so leaving this to an AI pilot makes the leasing worthwhile. So anyway, we touch down. It costs something like a hundred thousand again to lease, and it's fifty thousand a month for the Piper Cheyenne Two. So it's not cheap considering how much we get for each mission. But the Piper Cheyenne 2 can take flights that, this flight that we have to do in two chunks, it could do in one. So that'd be 12,000 for a relatively short flight. So that's not too bad. Anyway, here I am parking my Velocity V-Twin, which I may or may not fly again in this series. I don't know. It's unlikely. Uh, I mean, it's not the best cargo plane to begin with. So maybe I should have leased it instead. Anyway. It's been a fun plane, and certainly a change of pace from the Cessna. And if leasing thing works out though, we're going to be changing up planes probably a little bit more frequently than I initially thought. So we'll see. But the Piper Cheyenne 2 in the next video, I hope you're looking forward to that. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.